And Turner is a man that uh, never explained himself and never explained his work. He did it. He worked. He worked and he worked and he worked. He never really stopped working. Um, what is uh, interesting about Turner is that the work you see, the work that exists and now is on uh, exhibition here in one, a brilliant exhibition and all over the world. When you when you read and find out about Turner and, and spend time trying to match a human being to what the research throws up, you realise he would be, in a sense, the last person you would imagine him to have been. You could have thought he would be the guy that empties your bins, really, not the guy who has created some of the most beautiful work, works of art the world has ever seen. He was, a, he was a man of massive contradiction. He was uncompromising. He was uh, sometimes kind, sometimes not. He was a man of mystery. He was generous. He was generous, but lots of people said he was a miser. He was so generous that a man offered him the, equi offered him the equivalent of 300 million pounds to buy all his work and he turned it down. The reason? Because he was going to give it away. Who to? The British nation. Now that's not meanness, is it? That's generosity. So he was a man of contradiction, and a, a human man, a visceral man, a beast-like man, a man of sexual appetite, of appetite. He lived a real life, and he wasn't somebody who wore his talent on his sleeve. He was the embodiment of his talent. He was a master of the sublime. Not the sublime of a sublime cheesecake that you can have with a free coffee but the supply in being a man who was able to record not only the beauty of nature, but its devastatory nature, its horror and its evil, as well as its beauty and its sweetness. He was a man that caught that, because inside himself, he was like that. But if you looked at him, I say, you'd have thought, mm, excuse me, sir, uh, I think you need to go in the back entrance. Have you come to fix the boiler? Now I've come to deliver your masterpiece, mate. That's what he is, a genius but a very, very unusual one. Well, to play Turner, you need an actor who is obviously a great character actor, which Tim Spall is. Uh, he's also a Londoner, which helps. He, he knows working class people, which he do, because that's his own background. He's, the thing about Tim is he's ready a lot of Dickens. He's good at the 19th century. And uh, not only that, but I knew that he had some uh, pretensions to being a bit of a painter. So uh, we sent him to painting lessons for two years, and hey presto, he's playing Turner. We all work, we all work hard, and Turner worked hard, and you see a man who devotes him like, his life to a project, you know, and uh, he really does it, and it's very inspiring what he does. I also hope that um, people will go and look at Turner's paintings, and, or revisit them, because they're all out there. There's a lot of it, but um, it's great, you know. I mean, I've obviously, known about and enjoyed Turner for a very long time and after we made Topsy Turbot which is that film about Gilbert and Sullivan set in the 19th century it just occurred to me that we could do a film about Turner. Um, it's taken us quite a long time to get it to happen because we needed quite a lot of money and um, you know we had a lot we needed to research it and find out about it but here it is finished. Well he was great he was uh, eccentric he was flawed he was passionate he was um, emotional he was genius at what he did. Uh, he was dirty, he was grubby, you know, he was um, conflicted in some ways, he could be a nice guy and sometimes not, and certainly a great potential character for a movie, I, felt, I thought. We do, we are blessed here in the UK with brilliant actors, that's the truth. And the weather, we were, the weather was very kind to us when we were making this film, which of course, I mean, Turner painted weather, so we filmed it. Well, it's got something for everybody in it, really. It's a very, it's an action-packed, passionate, you know, view of 25 years of a man's life, including his death, you know, and, and his women and his relationships and, you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, there's enough to keep anyone going for quite a while, really. Certainly last year through Christmas. Well, actually, the way Mike works, we have the luxury of lots of rehearsal and character study, so uh, that's why I love doing theatre, because you've got that time as a given. So working with Mike, the difference is not that fast, really, and uh, you get a few goes at it. 
I was just saying to my family tonight, it's great coming to these premieres because you've already done it. You don't have to do the show and then, oh, then go talk after. Yeah. So it's like, oh, this is easy. Yeah, yeah. But I will say, um, doing stage work, and especially on Broadway, my biggest thing is people paid a lot of money for the tickets, a lot of money, and you just think, I just, I just hold that dear and think, I've got to. You've got to come up with the goods, <laughs> as I do with all my work. Um, but um, yeah, that pressure's not on. But you work with Mike quite a lot. Yeah, What's yeah. That like working with him and what keeps the relationship continuing? Oh, it's just it's just fantastic working with Mike because you you have all that freedom and but it's it's within strict rules the way he works the process. So you just when you come to shoot the scene, just you've, you're so safe in knowing your character that you know other things can happen. So and it's not live, so you can reshoot it. Exactly. And it's also really great fun. I think that really needs to be said about Mike because the work is, is so pure and, you know, we take it seriously. But we also just have a really good time as well. So the character you played, um, she was a housekeeper for Mr Turner. Um, how, how was it playing a character that was being sexually exploited and had an illness as well? I think it's yeah, quite a hard character. It was quite a hard character, but I, I, I personally don't think she was exploited. I think she was... She wanted it, yeah, and it was all totally consensual and, and she didn't have a life before him and she went to um, work for him at the, at, at, when she was 23, right through to the end. So, And the evidence from their wills and letters is there was pure devotion. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and, and just with the skin disease and everything, it's just, it's, it's liberating really to play those parts because, you know, you can't, you can't, afford to have any vanity. I don't think you should anyway with any part, but particularly when there's something that's quite significant to look yeah, at. Yeah, I think the, the costumes and, and the settings and everything are yeah. so great and so glamorous. Even now we're looking at everyone, obviously, it's so different. Yeah, it's a good job, really. Obviously, the film's been to Cannes already. Yeah. Um, what was the reaction like there? It was amazing, because uh, that, was, that was the first day of the festival. They'd been at the opening film, Grace of Monaco, the night before, but we were the first film in competition. So already, that's really exciting. And, but as we were having um, a break, there was news coming in from uh, home here that uh, the film had gone down really well. So it just it just sort of spiralled into this best one of the best nights of my life, really. I hope the audience will react differently or the same over here. I don't know. We've we've been in America and Toronto, and it's gone down really well there. I don't know. I just hope people embrace it as as they have done everywhere else. I think so. I think Mike's got a huge following, and I just. You know, I hope they're all behind it. It's, it's so it's such a beautiful film. I, I, you know, I hope people see that too. It makes you very patriotic because there's lots of beautiful Britain in it as well. Yeah, well, it makes you pro like that if you're British. <laughs> Well, of course, she was a real-life character. Mrs. Booth did exist, um, although not a great deal is known about her. So I did as much research, I read as many biographies, and there are various opinions. Um, but no, she really did exist. And in fact, she lived in Margate, exactly where the Turner Museum now sits in Margate. And if you walk to the end of the pier in Margate, there's a little Shell Lady statue called Mrs. Booth in her honour, so yeah, she very much existed, but nobody really knows very much about her. And uh, obviously you've taken the film to Toronto and Cannes. Yeah. Well, do you think audience will respond to it over here? Well, I don't know. You always keep your fingers, cr <laughs> fingers crossed. But I hope people love it. Um, he was, after all, one of our great visionary painters um, and a London visionary as well. I, I hope it makes people go and look at his work. There's a wonderful exhibition on at the Tate Gallery at the moment of his late paintings. So, yeah, I just hope. And I hope people just enjoy it as entertainment because um, he's a very interesting character, beautifully played by Tim Smith. Um, he's a complex character. Yeah, he's he's kind of very lovable in some ways and terrible in other ways, you know, so, like all of us. It's always great. And we, we worked together. We played husband and wife, actually, in a British TV series years ago. Um, and it's delightful. He's, he's a wonderful character actor and a lovely bloke, so uh, yeah, no complaints. <laughs> I mean, it was an extraordinary challenge, really, wasn't it, for for you, actually, Josh, let's face it, to uh, encompass the enormous intellect really, that was... That was <laughs> no, it was a struggle for me to encompass the struggle. enormous intellect. No, no, it was. He, he was. The one note, I think, Mike, the biggest note that Mike gave me and continued to give me was, why did you stop talking? 
Ruskin would never stop talking. <laughs> so don't stop talking. So then I had to go and read some books, so I had something to talk about. Um, which we did we before did. we started. We did, yeah. yes. So that's where we fit in. Of course, I mean, Turner is such a huge part of our artistic landscape. Mm. What does this song have to say about who he was as a man? And what does Tim Peters bring to him as a, as a, as a person, not just as a landmark of our artistic history? Well, actually, Tim brings great humanity, I think, to, to any role he plays. Um, and this is no exception. It's, a, it's a, an extraordinary performance. Um, that kind of explains, he doesn't use many words, but it kind of explains the man's heart. Well, for me, mm. it does. And that he was a person, as any artist is, a person, first and foremost, and their art is either an extension of them or, or a separate part of them. And I think, like you say, he didn't really have much to say, but everything he had to say was on the canvas. And mm. he was such an interesting character in life anyway, that even without his genius as one of the world's greatest painters, there would still be a movie to make about him without that. Whenever I've worked with Mike, uh, I've always had some insight into uh, an as aspect of life or you know, history that I, that I wouldn't have had had I not been working with Mike. So uh, he's a very, very interesting, uh, challenging person to work with. And I think that's there in the films. Absolutely, yeah. It might, like I was saying earlier, um, if you have your own method that um, isn't Mike's method when you come to do a film of his, chuck it out the window because it's Mike's way or the highway. And I think that's fair to say. Isn't it? It's the only way Mike works, the only way Mike knows how to work and produces the results that he gets. But what I think is great about the way of working is that it takes you back to life. And I think it's very important for actors from time to time to go back to life um, and not be constantly deriving the performances from other performances, if you see that. Uh, and that's always a great, great part of working for Mike, is to be reminded that what they're actually here for is to reflect life, okay. humanity. Yeah. Yeah. Bang on. Well, I play Sarah Danby, who's uh, Turner's first mistress. Um, she was married to uh, a musician called John Danby, and she had about five children. And then John Danby died, and she was pregnant with uh, her last child by John Danby. And she was fr they were friends, all friends in a sort of, you know, all artists together. And she ends up having uh, this relationship with Turner for probably 10, 15 years. Um, and when you see, I mean, in, I don't want to spoil it for people, but... Um, that their relationship is not the usual relationship because of how Turner is. Um, as a man, he's, he finds it very difficult to communicate to people. I mean, his communication is through his art, really, and I think he's a bit emotionally stunted in some respects. So, you know, they have a sort of rather difficult relationship, but he, actually, he has uh, two children by Sarah Danby, and um, you do see them in the, the film and you can see what sort of relationship they had or didn't have with the, uh, with the painter.